Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead Micro Moment Monday, where today we are going to solve a problem that I know that I have had from time to time, and perhaps you have too, and that is what do you do if your bread dough overproofs? So I have just finished mixing up and kneading this lump of dough, and this is in our cookbook. It is on page 32, 50% whole grain sandwich bread. And this is a recipe that I make a lot. So it's just ready to go in for its first proofing. Actually, it is called the bulk fermentation. We're going to just let this rise. Now, sometimes you might let it overproof on the first rise, which is not a big deal. You just punch it down and shape it anyway. But where the uh, difficulty comes is what I did, oh, I think it was about two weeks ago. You know, my whole life I have multitasked. Tasked? <laughs> I have. If you want. <laughs> I've done a lot of multitasking, especially when I was a working mom of six children and I was still baking bread for the family all the time. And I lost track of time. And sometimes after I had shaped the dough and put it into the pans and forgot about it, I'd come back and it was wilted over the edge of the pan. And I imagine that that has happened to some of you as well. Well, it happened to me again after years of not doing it about two weeks ago when I forgot to set my timer for for uh, checking in on that dough. So we're going to reproduce that event in my life a couple of weeks ago and deliberately overproof. Oof, I hope I'm able to do it because <laughs> it goes against my grain. Oh, maybe that's a pun. But in any case, we're going to let it overproof after we get it into the pans. So first step is to let this double in size. Then we're going to shape it and get it in the pans. And then we're just going to forget about it and let it overproof. And I'll show you what I do to rescue such a disaster. So see you in a little bit. Our bread has finished its bulk fermentation. And we are ready now to get it into the pans. So I'm going to turn it out on the counter. And I'm going to weigh it because I'm going to be putting it in two pans. And I want to see if I can pretty much cut it in half. 7... 22 is what I'm wanting. So it's 14.44, so we'll see how we do. 7.20, not too bad. Okay. A couple of grams, which is the same as a couple of raisins. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to shape this as usual and try not to think about letting it overproof. Cover it loosely. And I'm going to forget to set my timer. So we will come back when these are overproofed. And I'll show you what we'll do. Oh no, I've let my bread overproof. What shall we do? Oh, I'll tell you, this was hard for me to do. But look at this bread. It proofed, and then it started to sink down. If you look closely, you can see all kinds of little air bubbles right under the surface. Same on this one. Oh, my goodness, I've ruined my bread. Well, no, we haven't ruined the bread. We have just given ourselves an extra hour, probably, to get it ready because it... If I tried to test it for proofing, it almost is going to deflate it. That's not going to pop back up. So what we have to do now is we can just dump it out, deflate it. You can see how airy it is. And there is still enough life in this yeast that it should give us at least one more rise. Now, does it always work? Not ideally, but it should be pretty much okay. We're just gonna roll it up again. And I'm feeling it's pretty elastic, so I think it's gonna be fine. We'll give it another chance to rise. Now, what might happen on this 
second proofing is that it might take longer because the yeast is nearing the end of its life. But we want it to hang on just a little bit longer to give us one more rise. So it had been in the pan for an hour and a half, and that is probably about three times too long. This bread will rise where I like it to be in about a half an hour with this recipe. So I really let it go for a long time. So pinch it down. It will probably this time take about an hour for it to re-rise to get ready to go in the oven where we like it. But I will be watching it closely so we don't let it overproof again because that would be the death of it. Okay, loose the cover, the kitchen is about 70 degrees, so we're going to be back, I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes and then I'll check it. We will be back when it is ready to go into the oven, beautifully proofed, we hope. I think that it is time. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, so much better. Now these are ready because when I push it in, it pops, it pops back out very slowly. Now I'm going to give these just a little bit of a squirt of water on the top so that this doesn't harden so fast that it can't give more rise. We want it to have every opportunity to rise more because these are not quite as high as they were when they overproofed. And that's to be expected because this is the third time the yeast has had to work hard to get this bread rising up. So we're gonna put these in the oven and they should be done in about 25 minutes and we will come back when we're taking them out of the oven and see what we've got. The bread is up to temperature, it is 197, so it's ready to come out. So there's the first one. And the second one. They have a nice light brown color. They did not rise as high as they would have had they not overproofed but we saved the bread. I'm okay with these. The color is nice and um, the flavor is going to be really good. It, it, usually these are a little bit higher than this, but it is better to get them at this level than it would have been had we tried to bake it overproofed because what would have happened is it would have been the most crumbly, awful bread. You couldn't even have buttered it because it would have fallen apart. So we'll have a good tight crumb here and um, we've saved these two loaves of bread by just reshaping them and then letting them rise again and baking them. This is one way to save. You don't always have excellent results when you have to do it a third time. This yeast was on its third round of lifting the bread. It obviously is not going to be as high, but nevertheless, we've saved all of our ingredients and we have two really nice looking loaves of bread, even though they're just a little bit short. So I hope this helps you uh, when you, if you ever make a mistake and let the bread overproof, you know that you can reshape it and get it in the oven. And sometimes you get wonderful surprises. Sometimes there's enough yeast and enough lift left for a lovely rise. Hope you can apply this to if you ever make the same mistake that I did a couple of weeks ago. So thanks for being with us and we'll see you next Monday for another Micro Moment.